children, or oh, what is it that you want? That the city filled alike with the smoke of sacrifice and cries of misery. My children, I have come myself. I, Oedipus. Now then, speak, old man, since you are the natural spokesman for these folk. Tell me, have you gathered here in dread or in need? I am more than willing to help in any way I can. Lord Oedipus, observe as we group in requests by your altars here, some not strong enough to venture in flight, some burdened with age, some priests, as I, were picked to represent our youth. For, as you can see yourself, the city is at sea and can no longer lift her head above the fatal waves. A deadly plague is upon the town. Hell's black halls are rich with cries of grief and pain. For you, my lord, saved us from the tax we pay the cruel things. Though you knew more than any man, you saved our lives. And we thank you. It is better that you have a population to command. A city is worth nothing without its citizens. I pity you. My children, I know well why you have come here, and what you want. I know too well your sickness, but even in that sickness, there is not one of you whose sickness matches mine. The only plan for safety that my care and thought could find, I will make happen. For I have already sent out my wife's very own brother, Creon. Your, your words are helpful, my lord. These men have just now signaled me that Creon is coming. I pray he comes to us with luck and saving grace. His news are good, it seems. We soon shall know. He is now close enough to hear. Creon, what news have you come to bring us? Oh, the news are good, my lord. All our bad luck will be reversed and changed for the good, if things are done right. Done right? <laughs> Creon, what kind of talk is this? Allow me to speak, my lord. An oracle came to me and said that we must banish the source of pollution from land. We must drive out a murderer. Really? What sort of a man was it that suffered such a fate? King Laius, my lord. I believe he was the ruler before you? Yes, King Laius. I know him by repute. I have never seen the man. Well, we must avenge ourselves on those who killed him. Tell me, Creon, where can they be? In Thebes, my lord. It is said that a group of bandits surprised and killed the king. All were killed except for one who, who fled in fear. Mm. Yes, I will open up this case once more from scratch. You have brought our attention to this dead man's plight, and you shall all see that I will join in taking revenge, and we will either prove successful or fail. Everyone, Oedipus has just now promised us the object of our prayers and our journey here. I make this declaration. Although I was a stranger to the tale, as to the deed, I now address you, citizens of Thebes, whoever of you has sure knowledge of by whom King Laius was murdered, pass all information on to me. For I have now inherited the power King Laius used to hold before. I occupy his bed, I seed his wife, I would share his children's care with my own, had he been fortunate enough to breed. But unkind fate has denied him his sons. Citizens of Thebes, I shall be his champion, as if he were, well, yes, in fact, my very own father. And I will leave no stone unturned. As for the rest of you who find my words agreeable, May justice fight for you. 
Since you, my lord, have put me under oath, I shall speak. I did not kill the king, nor do I know who did. Your words are just. I do know a lord and man, Tiresias. Tiresias? Tiresias! You know all things, blind though as you are. You sense our city's plight and its disease. In you alone, Tiresias, we find a man to stand as our protector and our guardian. Freedom will only and only come if we with certainty find and identify the men who murdered the king and kill them too or drive them exiled away from this land please oedipus send me home easiest is it by far for you to bear your fate for me to bear mine if you obey you speak words out of keeping and unfriendly to the state which raised you by refusing to interpret your will. I see that what you say is far from fortunate, and I hold my peace to obviate the risk of suffering the same. No, you will not turn away from us if you have knowledge and we all kneel in supplication here. Fools, all of you, I shall never reveal the cause my distress! I cannot believe you will not speak of what you know. There is nothing to be gotten from me. Still refuse to speak? This is an outrage! You will provoke a very stone! You criticize my temper, my lord, but you do not know your own private situation. You yourself, the land's pollution. How dare you! The truth secures my strong defense. I say, maybe you are the murder of him whose murder you seek. All you say is false. Did Creon fabricate these lies, or are they yours? Creon is not threat to you. You're a plague upon yourself. Then it would seem to me that the both of you will regret your plans to purge me from this land. Although you are the king, I have the right to answer back. So hear me now. Do you want to tell me with being blind? You may have your sight, but you do not see the evil you are. Who were your parents, huh? Do you know? The course of your father and your mother will drive your injured feet in exile from this land. No man shall be crushed by such a cruel fate as yours. Damn you! Damn you to hell! Be gone and swiftly leave this house! I wouldn't have come here if you hadn't called for me. And I would never have called you here if I would have known you would spout such foolishness! I am what I am. A fool your opinion, but wise in your parents' eyes. Parents? What parents did I have? This very day, I will give you birth and give you death. Your every single word is cryptic, as if designed to mystify. Well, are you not the best of solving mysteries? Either way, your fate has ruined you, despite your gifts. As long as I save the city, I do not care. Then I shall go. Yes, go! Your presence hinders and distracts me. Once you are gone, you cannot pay me more. I'm not living of fear. You have no way of harming me. My message is this. The man you are looking for the one you claim killed King Laios, that man is here, a foreigner in residence. In fact, he will emerge as a true-born son of thieves. Now, go inside 
and think of this. And if you ever find out that I lie, you can indeed say that I know nothing about prophecy. My fellow citizens, I'm hearing that Oedipus the King is making dreadful accusations against me. If anyone can find that I've caused him any kind of hurt, well, then I have no further wish to live. Perhaps the charges he made against you came from rage rather than reason. Then what I hear is true. He is quite convinced. He did say that, but I do not know if it is true. And did he really make these accusations against me? I do not know. You there! My lord. How have you dared come back here, although being convicted of King Lys' murderer? And clearly, you seek to rob me of my throne. Tell me, Kriya, what stupidity do you see in me to plot these crimes? My lord, please, observe my lips and listen to my reply before you judge. Please, just let me explain this charge. I charge you to demonstrate your innocence. Just tell me, what is it that you think I've done wrong? You tell me, how long has it been since Laius? Since Laius what? Since Laius died. Did you not investigate the homicide? We held inquiries, of course we did, but there were no success. And how was it that Tiresias, at the time, made no sound. I do not know. Still, I will not be proven a murderer. But is it not true that you have taken my sister to be your wife and the mother of your children? Of course. Why would I deny the obvious? Well, I myself do not desire to be the king. So what is it that you want? Hmm? To drive me exile from this land? Oh, no. It is your death that I want, not your banishment. But I have a share in this city as well, Oedipus. It is not yours alone. Please, stop, my lords. I see you, Casa, coming from the house. You foolish man. Are you not ashamed? Pray, go inside the house. Brian, go home. My sister, your husband, he says that he will drive me from this land or even murder me. Exactly, as I have found him guilty in evil plots against my life. If I ever did one of the things that you're accusing me of, I would rather die. Believe him, Oedipus, please. Respect him and have respect for me as well. <laughs> then yes, let him go. I will go. You, Oedipus, I find ignorant, but she, she has found me just. My lord, what is the reason of your age? The reason? The reason is your brother and his plots against me. Can you tell me clearly who broke the conflict? He claims I am guilty of King Laius' death. Speaks in first hand or from another source? Oh, he sent a wretched prophet. So now he's free of blame. Well done. Set yourself free from charges of this and hear me out. No mortal man can share in divination, and I will reveal a simple proof of this. An oracle came to King Elias once and said that it will be his fate to die by the hands of his son, born by me. But according to the report, he lies died by the hand of foreign bandits. This happened at the place where the free roads meet. As for our son, he was three days old when lies pinned his feet together 
and had him thrown out onto the mountainside. The Fae did not ensure that the boy should be his father murder, and nor did Lion die. Those were the serious messages prescribed by prophecy. You, Oedipus, have no part in them. No, wait, wait, my wife. I thought what I heard was this. The place where the king was cut down was where three roads meet. This spot where the crime took place, where is it? The land is called Phokis. The road leads two places from Delphi and from Dahlia. And how much time has passed since then? A murder was announced in the town, but just before you claim control of the land. No! It cannot be! Oedipus, what is it that weighs on your soul? No questions yet. My wife, tell me first. What sort of a man was King Lyons? A big man, my lord. Not much different from you. No! There are dreadful curses upon me this day! What do you mean? There is dread in my heart that the sight of the prophet might be true. Please tell me just one more thing. Was he escorted by a few or did he have soldiers besides him? He had a party of five and an officer with them. Lies wrote in a single car. And who was it that told you this, my queen? A slave who escaped and came back home. This slave? Is he still in this house now? Why no? When he came back and saw you with power and lies being dead, he came to me. He begged me to send him to the fields, as he would be rather herding sheep than being thieves. So I sent him there. Well, how can we get him back? Quite easily. But why would you be doing that? I, I fear I have said too much. <clears throat> I wish to see him now, my wife. He will come, my lord. But. I am also worthy enough to hear the reason of your distress. I shall not keep it from you. Although I am truly, truly worried. My father was King Polybus. My mother, Queen Merope, and then a man, well gone in drinking, claimed I was not my father's proper son. Angry as I was, I visited my parents, and of course they were enraged at the man who would let such taunts fly. Still, I traveled to Delphi. And there, an oracle revealed to me a prophecy. A prophecy that said I would blend with my own mother in bed and kill my father. When I heard those things, I fled. I fled to a place where I would never see my prophecy become true. I reached the place in which you say the king was killed. And to you, my wife, I will tell the truth. At this triple meeting of the roads, I encountered an old man, followed by an officer. I was furious, mad with rage, as their driver, their driver had attempted to push me off the road. 
When the old man saw this, he swung at my head with his walking stick. Oh, did he come to regret that? I swung at him with a stick of my own. My spear! Right to the ground he went! And I killed them all! I killed them all! So yes, if there is a connection between this old man and King Laius, then there is no one more sorry than me. The hand that would bring about Laius' death, was it not so that my birth was cursed? My wife, if I must flee, never to take comfort in the sight of friends, nor even trade my soil, or else join my mother in marriage, kill my own father. My wife, what little hope I have left rests with this man, this herdsman. But when he come? What would you have for him? If his words are consistent with yours, I might then escape disaster. What was that you heard that was so decisive? You said, according to this man's story, that there were soldiers who murdered the king. If his story stays the same, then I cannot be Elias' killer, because simply, one man cannot be the same as many men. If he says there is a lone traveler, however. The city heard him say those things. Not I alone, but even if it says something else this time, it does not seem that the death was properly fulfilled. Since the prophecy said that it will be his fate to die by the hands of his son, and yet, it was never that poor soul that killed him. He disappeared long time before. You are, you are probably right. But just to be sure, send someone to bring the servant here and do it quickly. I will, my lord. But let us go inside the house for now. you joy as well, my friend. So tell me, what is it that you want? I came with something that will benefit both you and your husband. What kind of benefit? From where have you have come? I come from Corinth. The people there would make Oedipus king. What does this mean? Is Polybus no longer the ruler? Why no. 
death is holding him firm. Old man Polybus is dead, you say? My wife, my dear, what's happening? Who is this messenger and what does he say? He came from Corinth. And he came, he came to tell that your father is dead, Polybus. By evil plots or by disease? He died of old age, my lord. Then on whose authority was I convicted of killing my father? If he lies beneath the earth, and still I am here, innocent. These, these worthless prophecies. Must I still shrink in fear from my mother's bed? You must not fear your mother's bed. Many men have dreamed of sleeping with their mothers. I cannot be but full of dread, since my mother is still alive. Who is this woman you're so afraid of? And what is causing you this fear? Queen Merope, dear messenger. I have seen a terrible prediction, you see. Can you speak of it? Or is it forbidden for others to know? <laughs> I believe it is common knowledge that the prophecies one said I would couple with my own mother in bed and kill my father. This is why I, for these long years, have left my home far behind. I had no wish to be my father's murderer. It is pretty clear that you have been wrongly informed. If you as of this hesitate to travel back home. I hesitate in fear. This fear of the prophecy might be true. Still, do you not realize your fear is needless? How can that be? I am my parents' child. Because King Polybus had nothing to do with your creation. What do you mean? Polybus was not your father any more than I am. Then why did he name me his son? He, he received you as a gift, you see, from me and my hands. But his love for me was great. Did you purchase me, or did chance put me in your way? I, I found you up in the mountain. I was a shepherd there. And I, my child, am the cause of your rescue. I freed the bolts that pierced your feet. Was this my mother or my father's <coughs> work? I cannot tell. I demand you tell me. He who gave you to me, better knows. Another shepherd gave you to me. And who is he? Who is this man? I, I, I heard he was one of Laius's herdsmen, a shepherd to the king. I do believe he's the one today in the country men you already wish to see. Your wife might be the best to speak of this. My wife? You cost her? Do you know if this man is the one he means? Why talk of him? Do not concern. You need not be afraid. If I could only catch the clues that illuminate my ancestry, these clues would allow me to... For God's sake! If you care, about your life here at all. Do not pursue this. Like I said, you need not be afraid, because even if my mother is a slave, your birth is still noble. Oedipus, I beg of you, do not do this. You can never talk me out of uncovering the truth, even if you mean well. So. Let someone go bring the herdsman here. You poor man. I hope you will never learn your mother's name. I grieve for you. Never, ever more. You poor wretch. You cast her. Come back. I'm afraid the storm of misfortune is coming. Let it come! Still, I would wish to know where I am from. 
however pitiful it might be. This woman, though, she feels ashamed, perhaps by my low birth. But such is my ancestry, and I will pursue the secret surrounding my birth. My friend, I do believe I see the herdsman I seek. Yes, I recognize him. He was one of Lias's shepherds. You there, old man, come. Look me in the face and answer. Were you once one of Lias's men? I was. For most of my life, I followed him. And this man here, this messenger, do you recognize him? No, not that I could remember. That's not a surprise, my lord. I will try to refresh his memory, as I'm sure he will remember. We were once neighbors near the mountain. What you say is true, but it was a long time ago. Do you remember giving me a child? This man right here was once that baby boy. God damn you, man! You should hold your peace! Do not abuse the messenger, old man! But he speaks in ignorance. And you, you would never hurt an old man. Did you or did you not give this child to this man? I did! And I wished I'd die that day. And you may still die today if you don't tell the truth. Where did you get the child from? It was not mine. I got it from someone else. It was a child from Laius's house. I think his wife would tell you more. Was it she who gave it to you? It was, my lord. With the intent to kill the boy. And why? Why would a mother do such a thing? She was afraid of the prophecies. They said the boy would kill his own father. I thought my friend here would take the child elsewhere, away from his horrible destiny. If you really are the child of King Laios and Yocasta, you should know that you are damned. All true. It has all turned out true. This is the last time I look upon you. I am the ruined child. that even God could rush clean this house of its hidden crimes. Have you got any further news? Our lady, Queen Yucasta, she now lies dead. Poor lady, what happened? She killed herself. She fled the house full of emotion and hurried over to her marriage bed. There she slammed the doors. She cursed aloud the marriage which has burdened a husband from a husband, children from a child. How she then met her end, I, I do not know. Because Oedipus, he burst it in and did not let us look upon her final act of suffering. Back and forth he went, asking where his wife was. He gave us a dreadful cry that stumbled into the room. And there, there she was, 
his wife hang by the neck as he laid her on the ground. What followed was a dreadful sight. He picked off her golden pin, raised it up, and struck it through his own open eyes. He cried that they would never more see him, nor the consequences of his crime. At each strike at his eyes, black rain gushed of blood. Is this poor man's pain still bitter? He cursed things that I may not repeat, and demanded he may be exiled from the land. He is weakened now, and needs someone to guide his steps. Yet. He will show himself to you. It is terrible to look upon the suffering of men. I grieve for you, Oedipus. I cannot dare to look at you. But still in this horror, you inspire me. Ah! Ah! Of the darkness, I grieve for my misery. Where can I go with my pain? This pain. It has pierced me with memories of grief. I met my fate, my friends. For what should I now need eyes? What is left for me to see? Left for me to love? Drive me to exile, my friends. I pity you for your fate, my lord. I have come to be my father's murderer and the groom of her who gave me birth. Would then the children born as mine be a sight I would ever wish to see? I, the son of Thebes, asking the citizens to drive me out, and yet I am of Laius's bloodline. <laughs> Why? Why was I not just killed straight away? I am myself evil now. I can now see the truth, but not the world. I pray you, hide me away outside the city, or kill me, kill me now. Throw me away somewhere. You will never see me again out at sea. Creon is present now, and will deal with your demands. Creon? Why should he give me credence now? I have not come to mock you, Oedipus, nor am I here to revenge your insults against me. Then get me out of this land, as quickly as you can. I would be happy to do so, but that is for the oracles to decide. Then I make this request. Provide a tomb for the woman who lies within. Let me dwell amid the mountain range. I know you will see your own just Creon, as you should. As for my sons, you need not worry about them, for they are true men. And my daughters, however, they are weaker creatures. Still, they were always in my company. Please, oh please, you must take care of them, care of them, Creon. You are the only father left for them now. Share what you say with them. You have had enough time for tears. Go now. But what are my terms of exile? Again. What you're asking me is for the oracles to answer. But they do not like me, Creon. Then I am sure they will grant your wish. Fine. Then drive me away at once. Come and let your children go. No, no, wait. I've changed my mind. Leave them with me, please. Oedipus, the power that you used to have is gone. Citizens of Thebes, observe this man. Observe the fortune he has plumbed. Never call a man fortunate until his final day finally arrives. Never until he is unhurt by grief and by pain. For to run after the truth, well, that may be the real freedom that we have.
Antigone, my child. 